In this video, we're going to wrap up our discussion of probability distribution functions by talking about the survivor function and how we use the probabilities from the survivor function to calculate the expected values that we use in Littlewood's rule to find uh, protection levels. So I've written uh, Littlewood's rule for you again here, and we're going to use that uh, to uh, calculate our expected values and solve for theta, which was our protection level. But first, let me, um, I'm going to go over to Excel, and I just want to illustrate the survivor function. Now, I know this is probably difficult to see, um, but, but bear with me. I'll zoom in in just a moment. I just wanted to show you the Excel sheet that I've been using to um, illustrate these different uh, different distribution functions and how I, I used it to get the survivor function. So in these columns here, I simply, um, you know, this, this column here is the x-axis, so I've just chosen some values. I chose, uh, I wanted uh, 0 to be my uh, mean, so I just chose some values on either side of 0. And then Excel has built-in PDF and CDF functions, so I simply plotted uh, along the x-axis using these two input parameters. Here's a mu of 0 and sigma of 2. And um, then to get the survivor function, that is simply 1 minus the CDF. So there's no separate function. Um, the sur survivor function is the complement of the CDF. So to get that value, you simple, simply uh, take 1 minus the CDF. And then these three graphs here are simply the graphs of these three columns. Okay, so um, let me zoom in. Stand by a second. So now we can clearly see the survivor function. It's a mirror image of the CDF, so the complement is this you know, just flipped around um, graph. And let me see if my pen is working over here. Uh, no. Okay, now I have it. Uh, where is it? Uh, so the CDF we said was the probability that some random variable x was less than or equal to some value a, and that's the graph of that probability. So the survivor function is 1 minus the CDF, which is equal to 1 minus this probability statement with x, mm, oops, uh, sorry, less than or equal to Uh, where did my pen go? Sorry, there it is. Less than or equal to A, which is the same as saying that the survivor function is the probability that the random variable X is greater than some, some A. And let's take a look at that in the concept of, uh, uh, in the context of demand. And I've changed my mu so that I would get um, a nicer looking graph Mu is now, uh, what did I do? I think I chose mu of 6 and sigma of, yeah, mu of 6 and sigma of 2 because I wanted the, I wanted this graph to start at 0 over here because that makes more sense when we're talking about uh, demand. So right here, so let's, let's see if we can interpret this. We're saying now, so the survivor function says that the you know, the probabilities are flipped around, so the highest probability starts at 1 for the lowest value. So what is the probability over here that the random variable is greater than some value? Well, if you start out at the lowest value, what is the probability? So this is demand. What is the probability that the demand is as, at least as great as 0? So what is the probability that at least nobody wants to, to buy your seats? Well, you know, it's trivial, but it's, it's one. At least there's going to be at least no no demand. As you move further out, so if you said, what is the demand for one seat? It's something less than one, uh, three seats, five seats, etc. So seven seats, the probability that there will be demand for seven seats is something below 0.4. And when you get all the way out here to infinity, the probability of uh, selling or the probability of the, there, there being demand for infinity seats is is zero or very close to zero. And this is a uh, asymptotically decreasing 
curve, right? So each value is at, le is at least as small as the previous one. And that makes sense, right, in terms of demand. You know, the, the, the more, you know, the greater the level of demand, the more likely that you're, or, or, excuse me, the less likely than that that uh, demand is going to materialize. Okay, let's go back to the blackboard and see how we use this to calculate expected values. Okay, so here we are back with Littlewood's rule, and we have seen, I think, ad nauseum, that this probability statement is the survivor function. So now we know if we're uh, assuming a uh, distribution assumption, sorry about that. So if we're assuming that we have a normal distribution, we know how to use the estimates of mu and sigma to calculate this probability statement. And remember, uh, when we talked about Littlewood's rule, this is the this is the variable here. Theta is the number of seats we would protect for this FH for this higher fair customer. Well, so let me so let me just uh, really review this quickly for those of you who who may not have seen that video or remember it. So we said Littlewood's rule states that um, when you have a low fair customer with certainty. So we said that um, we're assuming that low fare customers, so FL is for F low fare, FH is high fare. So when you, you had a low fare customer standing in front of you, so in other words, you know with certainty you can sell the lower fare. Should you accept that lower fare or should you reject that customer and wait for the higher fare customer to arrive? But you don't know with certainty if that guy's going to arrive, so there's some probability associated with that customer, and using that probability, we can get the expected value of that customer. So using this inequality, if the if the fare you get with certainty from the lower fare customer is greater than the expected value from waiting from the higher fare customer, you accept the lower fare uh, lower fare and move on. If not, then you protect more and more seats for the higher fare customer. Okay, and we're gonna we're gonna see that um, in our graph of the survivor function. And you know what? Let me let me pause because I want to make sure these graphs are are drawn correctly so the example works. Okay, I think I have what I need here. So what I've drawn here is a, a graph that should look like a survivor function. It's it's actually not, and I'll tell you why in a moment. But I've also added in some fares here. So I put on the left-hand side here fare high and added a fare of $200 and fare low uh, and added a fare of $100 just to make the example a little bit more intuitive. And now let me show you why this is not just the survivor function, it's the expected value. What, what we've done here with this graph is we've actually taken the survivor function, so this statement, and multiplied it by the fare. So when we start at this point, remember we said when demand is uh, zero, let's get that done there, yep. When demand is zero, the probability of, excuse me, the probability that at least nobody will um, wanna buy zero seat, you know, excuse me, the probability that there will be at least no demand is one. So the, it's kind of trivial, but you start out at one times the uh, fare and you, you get the expected value of 200. As you move out though, it gets a little bit more uh, sensible. So now the probability that there will be demand for one seat is something less than one. So you take that probability, let's say it's uh, 0.8 and multiply it by the fare of 200 and now your expected value is uh, something uh, let's see if I can write it in here, something like 180 for this point. As you move out on the curve, the more seats you add, so the, the probability that you'll sell at least two seats is less than the probability you'll sell one seat. So, so the expected value from that marginal seat, from the second seat, is going to be something less than the expected value from the first seat. Let's say maybe it's uh, 170, maybe the probability there is uh, um, 0 0.8, uh, 0 0.85. I forget what I said. Did I get that math right? Anyway, um, 
So, uh, and that's where we introduce this new term of the expected marginal seat revenue. And you may uh, recognize that as the name of a very popular heuristic in revenue management that's used to calculate uh, protection levels um, in, in any number of fair classes. So Littlewood's rule um, is for two fair classes, the expected marginal seat revenue heuristic generalizes that to more than one fair class and also formalizes a bit how you actually calculate these protection levels. So EMSR, so the, the, the y-axis here is the expected marginal seat revenue that comes from protecting each marginal seat. And remember we said all, all seats, excuse me, all decisions are made on the margin. So we're not, we're not interested in calculating the expected value of selling two seats here we want to know the expected value of just that additional seat because we're going to compare that expected value with the uh, revenue that we can get with certainty from just selling the $100 fare to the low fare customer who's standing in front of us. The other thing I'm going to do here to change this from Littlewood's rule to EMSR is I'm going to change this inequality to an equality. And then we can see that in order to find theta, so we're using this graph really to find theta, and by the way, that's my x-axis here. We're gonna, we're gonna find the theta. We're gonna choose theta that makes this inequality. So when, in other words, we know what FL is. It doesn't change, it's $100. We're gonna find theta that makes this probability statement 0.5, because 0.5 times the $200 fare will be $100, and the two sides will be equal. So if we can find theta, that it results in a probability of 0.5, we'll find where these two are equal. So let's let's look at our graph. Are we equal here? No. Well, the um, probability of zero seats is greater than 0.5. It's one. So the expected value from uh, fair high is 200. It's greater than 100. So the inequality obviously is not met. As we move further and further down, let me draw another point out here. Let's say we have point, uh, excuse me, three seats. So, and um, you know, let's just make something up. Let's say the probability here is um, uh, 0.6. So the probability of selling the third seat to a high fare customer is 0.6. So the expected value would be, or the expected marginal seat revenue would be $120. Well, 120 is still greater than 100. So the inequality is not made. Similarly, point, excuse me, four seats is still results in expected marginal seat revenue greater than 100. When we get down to the fifth seat, the way I've drawn it here, this must be where the probability uh, of x greater than theta h is equal to 0.5, where theta, in this case, theta equals 5, right? So when, when we protect five seats, the probability that we will get that fifth customer is 0 0.5. 0 0.5 times the uh, high fare of 200 equals 100, and that's where the two are equal. So we'd have $100 on the left side that we'd get with certainty from the low fare customer, $100 on the right side that we would get as an expected value given the probability that at least five customers show up. And that's it. That's how you that's how you optimize in revenue management. That's how you find protection levels using EMSR uh, with the normal distribution assumption. And given that you can uh, estimate the survivor function from some estimates of mu and sigma that come from some forecast model, and we'll talk about that at uh, some later period. But you know, this is a stochastic optimization model. There's probability in, involved here. Um, the, the more, you know, quote, more complex models have to do more with the structure of the network as opposed to the models. They get, you know, the, the optimization models get more complex because the underlying problem gets more complex. But the, the concept of finding out, you know, finding these equalities where there's an indifference point between two decisions is how you find control uh, mechanisms in, in revenue management. So once you understand this, whether it's a network model, a nonlinear program, 
um, or uh, you know other things that um, we'll talk about in the future that underlying concept really doesn't change and don't forget you know it's not just a distribution assumption estimating those two parameters mu and sigma are extremely important because if you feed the wrong probabilities in if you have the wrong underlying distribution uh, parameters you're going to get the wrong probabilities and you're going to have um, you know garbage in garbage out your controls are not going to be accurate uh, the last thing I'll say about this and we'll talk more about EMSR but this is an example of just two fare classes you know obviously in in a real airline market you'd have more than two and EMSR generalizes to any number of fare classes so what you would have is something that looks like uh, this I'll get that better you will have um, other EMSR curves for lower fare classes and they start um, going out like this and there can be any number of these things and you calculate protection levels for for uh, each fare class so that's it that's going to wrap up our discussion of probability models if you have any questions please do uh, leave them in the comments and um, I'm not sure what we'll do next probably uh, we may go over to forecasting because I really want to reinforce the concept that these parameter estimates are all important